we have with us here Dr. K. Rajalakshmi Menon, one of the pioneering defense scientists in this country. And uh, she is now currently the head, the director general of the aeronautical systems of the RDO. Welcome to the week, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. It's a very nice, uh, pleasant uh, you know, morning in Bangalore. So, yes. um, there's certain things that I wanted to ask you. For example, now, the entire way in which modern wars are being conducted, it's you know, undergone a lot of you know, transformation, a lot of change. Yes. So, how, how, uh, you know, how do you look at the development of aeronautical systems and all, you know, yeah. in the context of the changing wars? So, I think uh, the Operation Sindhu has really given us a paradigm shift uh, to a certain extent, visibly it looks like there is a big shift from you know, manned systems to unmanned systems. But when you look at it deeply, it is not that uh, manned systems are totally out because once we have the air superiority, mm. we still need mm. manned platforms. So always a war or any conflict or any you know, situations which we need to overcome cannot be done with one solution. It is a mix of solutions. So there is a need for unmanned systems. There is a need for manned systems, then complemented by many other ground systems. So it is a, a combination of all of them used very judiciously in a network-centric warfare, which actually can uh, you know, make sure that your objectives are met, the adversaries are neutralized, and uh, you, uh, you know, uh, proclaim as a winner in the war. Mm -hmm. So it is a combination of many things. And uh, of course, uh, unmanned has got a bigger role which we have not seen over these many years before. And the same has been also seen in uh, Russia, Ukraine, or any other wars. I think a lot of effort that has been done because of the cost effectiveness that is there in the unmanned uh, world. Actually, it looks that it is uh, very effective, but uh, eventually uh, air superiority required. You need a good uh, manned platforms of uh, higher generation so that you can we can meet uh, final objectives. With our, uh, you are at the cutting edge of the, you know, on the technology front. So, as far with the current level of expertise and technological capacity that we have, what are we capable of now? What is India capable of now in building as far as fighter engines are concerned? It's fourth generation, 4.5 generation, fifth generation. So, as you know, fourth generation technologies has already been developed uh, with the uh, uh, DRDO and uh, Industries, Academia, all of them coming together. Uh, we have started from scratch, I should say, in yes. the 80s. And uh, from that, what we have come up to, having all the technologies for fourth generation, mm. is an achievement by itself. Yes. Okay, Even though, uh, as has been many times you know, uh, told uh, as a negative point of not meeting the full requirements for LCA, the fighter, yes. but still, the achievements of what technologies we have been able to develop and prove itself is, you know, uh, a big step, a big leap that has been already taken. And from there, we can now actually, you know, uh, go for a much higher level and uh, go for the fifth generation, certainly. And sixth generation, um, a time, some more time, we should be able to achieve. So our, uh, uh, whatever we have done in past, has been an investment, I should say, so yes. that we can, uh, you know, actually uh, get the return of investment through other programs. So only aspect is we should not uh, get, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, interrupt this uh, pace yes, at yes. which things have been moving, because once that interruption happens, it becomes very difficult to keep up with the pace and achieve. I think the um, best example is in 60s, we were doing HF Marut, then after some time there was a drop, and then to bring it up, we took a lot of long time. I think at some point of time, if we had continued, uh, I mean, uh, the gap would have been much less. So we should not make such, uh, I will say, mistakes or maybe uh, you no know, oversight uh, should not be there and we should be uh, continuing our efforts. And uh, you know, then only we can actually succeed. So if you see again how uh, ISRO has uh, succeeded, they started with Aryabhata. Yes. And every stage, they have continued progressively. I think that is what we need to look at, in, even in engines or any other programs of uh, national import, importance. Because that is very, very important of continuity. Because that gives uh, continuity to the 
people who are working on it and then the technologies that we are doing the infrastructure other things that we are developing all of them actually adds up together when there is a uh, continuity in the work right so we are in the right direction i will say could have been faster when i am looking today uh, and looking behind but at that point of time i am sure starting a fresh to come up to this level that gap or the that time that has been taken is justifiable because we don't have the ecosystem that is actually required today we are lucky that the industries have come up to this level the academics also has got a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, development or uh, technologies already developed so that ecosystem is today helping us to move faster which was not there in 80s i think so today is the right time to uh, go ahead and uh, pursue what we want to do as a nation and give the best to the users so that they can achieve their objectives in the least uh, you know uh, risk with least risk uh, well one main issue as far as developing aero engines in india is concerned is the funding factor the russians the americans the chinese have invested heavily but not in case of india i mean uh, uh, there has not been the required amount of investment being made so how do you look at it i mean do you think funding issue is one of the challenges that we have faced uh, see uh, certainly funding is very very important but again i look back and think if suppose the kind of money today we are talking about was invested in 80s whether we would have been able to deliver probably no because the ecosystem is still not ready we need the pace to develop okay so i don't think we did a mistake of not funding the funding was there at the right pace up to say 2012 after which the kaveri uh, program was delinked from lca yes. for uh, the technology uh, technical reasons yes. and uh, but at that point of time funding i don't think was the problem okay there is uh, a, a full uh, technology gap that was there it took time for us to um, bridge that gap and come up to this level but today if we don't fund it mm-hmm. i think it will be a big blunder i will say so the ecosystem is in place now today, more or less today it is more or less in place and um, fortunately uh, even uh, from the world other uh, industries the other countries are also willing to partner with us and uh, bridge any gap that is there to go to the fifth generation uh, uh, fighters uh, engine requirement so within the country and from outside the country we have uh, enough uh, uh, support and the ecosystem is ready to do that again if we say in 80s if we had asked uh, any uh, international engine house to say support us see they will also be apprehensive of what our capabilities are and uh, in any collaboration it is only equal partners or people with equal capability who can partner with each other absolutely so today we are in that state and today people are coming with uh, to us with respect because there are indian houses who has already evaluated and assessed our capabilities and have uh, proclaimed yes india has got a in a matured level to take up uh, higher uh, engine uh, capabilities and uh, development design and development so today from within the country outside the country government atmanirbhar everything is actually uh, really the conducive environment that is there today to uh, take up higher uh, capability project, uh, engine projects and also madam talking about the iih the the international engine house so have we zeroed on to a particular uh, iih or uh, we are yet to decide no no not, not yet uh, you as you know there are not many in the phrase yes, yes. so there are some criteria and uh, the decision is beyond us mm-hmm. because it is a national uh, uh, decision and there are at the appropriate level decision will be taken but we have been discussing with all the major players and uh, we have got positive response from uh, almost all of them and um, at the right point of time we will be uh, submitting the papers taking the right decision and then going as per whatever is the uh, is is there a timeline for that madam to decide which ih see uh, the best thing that has happened now is we have been given a go ahead to put up the uh, note okay so i think uh, uh, and that is that we will do very fast okay after that because it is a very important decision affecting many other uh, factors 
uh, it's up to the different uh, machineries within the government to give the right decision at the appropriate time. So it's uh, uh, there is a consensus on what the approach should be, but who is the IEH is not yet uh, finalized. But the general scheme of things, we will have an IEH, we'll have a DCPP, we will have academic uh, uh, this thing. What is the type of uh, engine ca category of engine that we would like to be developing and what further spin-offs we are expecting? All of them, there is a consensus and there is a uh, uh, good uh, uh, no, confirmation from the government for us to initiate the process. So and we are in that state and uh, I'm sure it will not take uh, much time. Okay. So that is for sure. And coming back to a very moot player question, is the Kaveri project, is Kaveri dead or is it alive? And if it is alive, in what form does it exist? See, uh, it is, it has been, uh, it, it is the seed that has sown and it has come up to the level where I will never say it is dead because what lessons we have learned and further after, uh, you know, uh, with the uh, engine, we are able to uh, take it for uh, UCAB applications and uh, we are going in full fair, full fledged form to see that the Kaveri can be used in the uh, UCAV. So that way it is not dead and we will be using it. It is also our aim to see that the Kaveri uh, engine in its full form, the way it has been developed, is also you know, tried on a platform so that we get the full confidence of actually closing the loop, end-to-end -end loop. So that is one aspect that is uh, left, if you say about the Kaveri. Um, in that form, we would like to take it up. So we are talking to all the stakeholders so that, you know, it gives a good confidence of integrating on a platform and flight testing it. Anyway, as a flight test bed, we will be doing it and so that all the qualification and certification is updated. But we will also try so that that last mile confidence that yes, India has developed an uh, engine which is also integrated on a platform and flown and... Uh, and indigenous know, in a platform? In, we're, of course, indigenous platform. So that, that gives a confidence, okay? As scientists, our aim is uh, to see that end-to-end -end as a system, we develop and prove it. Because otherwise, every time there is a doubt, if will it also work on a platform? You're done on a flight test, but it's fine. But what about on a platform? So once we do that and prove it, that confidence level to, or, and, or even if there is a problem, we can get an a priori no and take actions for you know, future programs. So we are aiming at it. And so Kaveri is not dead. It is alive and it will always be living in the minds and hearts of the people who have really worked on it. And uh, I'm sure the nation will be proud of Kaveri engine, the program that has been taken up by GTRE, DRDO in uh, with all the stakeholders, academia, industries, I mean, the certification process, the materials, I mean, the industries who have all involved. I think it's a fantastic uh, journey together that all the stakeholders have taken. So I think Kaveri lives. Uh, and Madam, coming to the last you know, question, there has been a glamour, I mean, some kind of a consciousness within the citizenry of this country. So they have raised, even in social media and on otherwise, this uh, campaign called the Fund Kaveri Campaign. Yes, I so, did see that. Uh, what do you think about it? I think uh, we all are encouraged and uh, actually very happy that the nation is behind us for this program. And uh, I mean, you know, to first time, I felt that, you know, it's not only uh, the GTRE or DRDO or a few companies who are actually, you know, battling to complete this program. We have the backing of the full uh, no, country behind us. And uh, it's an encouragement to each and every person working on the program. And we are really thankful to the nation and each and every citizen who were part of that to encourage us. It's, it's good to know that they are giving their might. I mean, I, I'll just say like, it's like how the squirrel contributed to yeah. the Setu uh, no, building. It's like that each and every you know, uh, uh, individual in this country wants to contribute and say, we are ready to do. I mean, it's a, it's really, you know, um, uh, the unity of the nation for a program like Kaveri, it really shows how much it has impacted in the minds of the people. And uh, it's, that is only the you know, uniqueness of the country, I feel, that uh, we, we unite ourselves when there is a really need. I think really, I mean, it's overwhelming and we really thankful to each and every one of that. See, it doesn't matter, does it really make sense? No. But the 
message behind it is more yes, important yes. and uh, it's it's good good feeling and encouragement to each one of us thank you for that and i'm sure it must be some journalists who have started and uh, the people who have joined at a, at times it is it's a it's a good way of encouraging that the scientists to say that we are there with you thank you <laughs> thank you so much and from the week thank you so much ma'am and wish you all your, your all the best in uh, yeah. all future endeavors so, as usual thank you very much yeah. and uh, it's only when uh, you know we get good feedback in the media that uh, we will also get you know uh, we, we we really want good talent to come to drdo and their yes. in engine programs so i'm sure it is only with uh, you know the uh, articles that you write can motivate the minds and they ignite the minds of youngsters and work towards programs of national importance thank you very much thank you so much thank you.